Isaiah chapter 62 1st John the 62nd book of the Bible coming to the end of Isaiah again we're looking at the millennium Israel restored puts to the fallacy of people God's all finished with Israel if God's all finished with Israel we wouldn't be having these chapters in the Bible for Zion's sake, Jerusalem, shall I not hold my peace? For Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest. So, God is determined. God is purposed. God is looking forward to. God's not willing that tribulation come Jacob's trouble. And he wants Jesus Christ to go get his people and bring them in the promised land but God has a calendar God has time and the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth and you read in Psalms thy words a lamp unto my feet a light unto my path there it is what's that word Jesus Christ John chapter 1 it all goes back to Jesus. Don't, you know, the Bible is not about salvation. The Bible is about a kingdom. And a kingdom that it was given to Adam that Adam failed. A king that was given to Lucifer that Lucifer failed. A king that, that will be given to Jesus Christ and will never fail. Of a people of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You say, what about the church age? What about the Gentiles? We're in here as stumbling blocks for the Jews because the Jews rejected Jesus. You know, again, I'm, I'm going to say this off and on. I'm going to say this all the time. They look forward to Calvary. Well, if they look forward to Calvary, there would be no Gentile church today. Because the Jews were gotten right. The Jews would have trusted the Messiah. And then there would be no church history. But they outright rejected Jesus Christ. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness. So there are Gentiles in the millennium. There are Jews in the millennium. There are Christians in the millennium. Shall see thy righteousness. Everybody's going to see the righteousness. That righteousness is Jesus Christ. All the kings thy glory. I read that for a moment. I said, all the kings. That's interesting. It does not say presidents. Well, you know, the, there was no presidents back then. Did you read Daniel? I think there were three or four presidents in Daniel's time, and Daniel was one of the presidents. Don't tell me God doesn't know what presidents are. So in the millennial kingdom, you don't see the office of the presidency because you know there's presidents in the Bible in the time of Daniel. The Babylonian king, God knows what a president is. He says kings. He doesn't say presidents. Think about that. And we're the only nation. Oh, we're not going to have a king. We're not going to have a queen. Yeah, you've been rebelling against God ever since. None of our revivals of proper Bible revivals ever happened under a president. All the worldly nonsense and, and carnival revivals happened after the presidents. The Great Awakening, the one and two Great Awakening. There was no president in the United States. You got to know church history. It says kings, it doesn't say presidents. You want to read about presidents, you read about them in Daniel, and they rejected God's prophet they rejected god's man they wanted daniel to be put to the lion's den the united states love is not israel it's money and oil and the arabians thy glory thou shalt be called by a new name which the mouth of the lord shall it's gonna be a lot of new names coming up christians get a new name and I've heard, I've heard, well, no, that's not true. Yeah, we're going to get a new name. 
And we're going to get a new name that fits our character on our Christian walk. And I can think of some unreliable good name for the worldly Christians today. Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, Israel. America has no crown. They got rid of the crown. And a royal diadem in the hand of, the, of thy God. America never had a royal diadem. America never had a tiara. The Bible way is kings and kings and kingdoms and queens. Royalty. We're a Christian nation. Not according to the Bible, you're not. Royal diadem in the hand of thy God. Thou shalt no more be turned forsaken. And that's what they are today. They are, as a group of people, they are forsaken, put on the shelf. Now, an individual Jew can be saved. Now, I support missionaries that go over to Israel and send out Bibles and gospel. Individually, they can get saved. Corporately, they're not going to be saved. And yet, there's a period of time called Jacob's Trouble, where it's the chastisement of God upon the nation of Israel. That period of Jacob's Trouble, the seven years tribulation period, is going to end by God's Son coming on horseback, redeeming, giving Israel back into their promised land, getting rid of the enemies of Israel and putting Jesus Christ on the throne as God forever intended. You do know that Adam and Eve were brown skin. Adam means brown. They weren't white European and they were not black African. I know that's a big shock there. Neither shall thy land, there it is, that's the land being attacked today by Hamas. That the, that the, the media gets all upset when, when Israel Israel's missiles kill a couple children, and yet they don't tell you what Hamas does to Israel. And that Hamas will take their families and put them in a way in the missiles. While Israel will take their families and put them in bomb shelters. They don't tell you that much. You need to just turn off the booby tube. Put the bra on the television set. And open up your Bible and read the Bible. Get the milk from the Bible. Not from the media. You don't want the milk from the whore. You want the milk from the word of God. And thy land shall be called no more desolate, but thou shalt be called Hezbada, which means my delight is in her. That's not today, my friend. Israel keeps selling that, that territory. Israel keeps giving up that land. And God says, don't you do it. That's my land. And thy land, Beulah. And, you know, there's a few hymns out there, Beulah Land, and, all. and I wonder what Christians ever mean. You know, we're so well in this sweet Beulah Land. Do you know what Beulah means? Do you know where Beulah Land is? You're going to sing about a hymn, but we're going to dwell in Beulah Land. Where is Beulah Land? What is Beulah Land? It's the land of Israel married to God because Beulah means married. Imagine a carnal Christian singing Beulah land. And I don't know where, where Christians that don't earn inheritance go. I really don't. For the Lord delighteth in thee, Israel, and thy land shall be married. That's not today. You got the Catholics running around. You got the Arabians running around. You got the, 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 the Christians. We're in the Holy Land. <laughs> You're going to go over to the Holy Land. <laughs> if you can't make it over, you can go to the Holy Land experience in Florida. 
Oh, then he go to Tennessee for the Ark. Ha, 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 ha. Commercialism. Cash, check, or money order, please. Close your Bible. You worldly, carny Christians that are poor, miserable, naked, blind, and dumb. I had it dumb. Why is it that Christians don't know what we're learning about today? Or as a young man, Mary the virgin. And God, this is what God's liking to Israel. God's all finished with their old of the bad Jew. And God's liking the Jew as a virgin. I mean, let, let's be honest now. Let's look at all the sins of Israel. They killed Christians. They killed the apostles. They killed Jesus. They didn't kill Jesus. Exodus 12 said the nation of Israel had to kill that Passover lamb. And one of your great world preachers of great pride rejects that statement. Okay? And God's liking that nation is, why a virgin? Why is all of a sudden she clean? Because when she gets in line, when she comes through Jesus Christ, she's been redeemed by Jesus Christ. Jesus said, and the Bible says, and God said, their sins will I remember no more. There is Israel being clean again. I was a virgin one day. I, I, I was married and I became a virgin. April 25th, 1987, I became a virgin and got, I, I, I'm newly born. Newborn babe under Jesus Christ. I'm not going to go back and sing happy birthday when I was born in sin and trouble. I'm going to sing happy birthday to the day I was newly born and got, got saved. Churches don't represent that. Virgin. And shall thy sons marry thee. As a bridegroom rejoices over the bride. That's Jesus Christ in the church. So shall God rejoice over thee. So there's a difference between the bridegroom and the bride. And God and thee. The, the bride and bridegroom is Jesus Christ in the church. Then there's another marriage of God and his bride, which is Israel. God's bride and city is Jerusalem and the Jews. Jesus' bride and city is the church and New Jerusalem. Don't get it mixed up. Don't you say God's marrying the church. He's not. Jesus is king over the Jews, not a husband. And you say, well, how do you get that all messed up? Because when you go into Matthew, you get the bridegroom and all that all messed up between the attendants of the bride and the guests of the bride. You know who the guests of the marriage is? The Jews. You know who the bridegroom is? It's Jesus. You know who the bride is? It's the church. And when you read Matthew and them, it says the guest. The bride is the church. You get it all messed up. When you go run into Matthew with church age doctrine, you've already messed it all up. I have set a watchman upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silent. <laughs> you know what God's saying? Don't shut up about the Lord. Keep boasting about the Lord. Keep singing praises to the Lord. You know what the world says today? Shut them up. Call the police. You know what churches say to, to, to Christians who are out there, who are out there and, and, and preach the gospel? I let my light shine. That's not what Jesus would do. You're turning people away. Professing Christians, I don't know if they're saved or not, but professing Christians will say that. The Bible says, Jesus says, I love them feet. God says, I love them feet. Jesus said, preach the gospel. He didn't say, invite them to church. He said, preach that God. I enjoy it. And God says, don't shut up about it. Why is it Christians want you to shut up? And give him no rest till he establish. Till he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. And a praise in the earth today. Again, Hamas firing missiles into Israel today. 
And then when Israel fires in retaliation, all the world cries foul. And all the world says, Israel should stop, Israel should stop. How about you nuke the hell out of Hamas? We got plenty of missiles. We boast the most military power of the world. We can kick everybody's butt, but we can't go over this little country named Hamas and wipe them out. We got the CB. We, 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 got, we, got the, we, we got the elite Marines. We got the elite Navy. We got the greatest Air Force. We got the greatest Army. We've got the, all these. And we can't go over there and whip Hamas's butt. For the name of Israel, in the name of God and Jesus Christ, the nation that we are, because the other brothers of Abraham and Lot, well, they get mad at us and won't give us gasoline. They won't sell us petroleum. And we can't take part in the worldly fame of the Middle East. And that's where America falls. Because America right now, America right now could send our elite forces and we can go into Hamas and we have the ability to go in there and save a Jew and kill, wipe out Hamas right now within the next 24 hours. Why don't we? And then we turn out we love Israel. And uh, no, you don't. You can set Israel free right now. I mean, you're not going to stand for that. Because the Middle East will hate you. Those nice little friendly Muslims. And we sure don't want to upset the whore in Rome. Why not? What's the problem? We're reading the Bible. Israel's God's people. God said, I will curse them that curse you. We're not helping Israel today. We had not helped to eliminate the enemy of Israel. We're not helping them. We're not blessing them. What would you What would you do if you were the president of the United States? I say right now, I, I get a hold of Israel. I say, listen, you you do what Revelation says. You tell Israel, everybody come out of Hamas, and then you move the Israelis about a hundred feet, about about. 50 miles away from Hamas and put them in homes and all that and then you get the orders yeah, I, I called the United States nuclear submarines that I helped build I called the West Virginia the Rhode Island the Maryland that I worked on I said boys open up those 24 missile tubes this is the launch orders and Hamas and the next day, all the news media, ah, ah, ah. boys, open up the 24 other missile tubes on the, on the nuclear submarine and bomb the hell out of the media. That's what I would do. And I could contact Israel and say, hey, we'll go over there, we'll get the CBs, we'll clean it all up, make it all look pretty, clean up the beaches, and you can move in. And then we'll be getting letters from the from the Arabians. We'll get married from the Middle East. We're not going to give you no more fuel. That's perfect. Good. We got fuel out in California. We got fuel. In t well, you can't put oil fuels out here. Then shut up and move because we're going to do it. But we got panty waist presidents who have no care and no dealing and have no love for God as a Christian nation for Israel. We, we, we could help Israel out right now. There's an answer of protecting Israel. But we don't want to step on other people's toes. Nope. I pray for Israel. The Lord has sworn by his right hand. You know what that right hand is? That's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. There, there's Jesus right there. Not only does God swear by his holy name, but he swears by the name and by the work of Jesus Christ. By the arm of his strength. <coughs> I apologize. What's the strength of Jesus? He's able to save all men who call upon him. And no wise cast anybody out. Surely. 
Surely I will no more give thy corn to meat for thy enemies. Oh, how many people are, are surviving off Israeli food? You know, they grow the great grapes over there and great wine and all kinds of agriculture. And they're being fed to the, to the enemy. There are enemies of Israel cursed of God because they curse Israel and they're eating Israeli food that's grown in the land of Israel, God's land of the, of the Hebrews. God said, he ain't going to do that no more. I wonder how much food comes from Israel that the KKK eats when they hate the Jews. How much food goes into G G Germany by Israel when Germany tried to eliminate. You know how much food went from Israel into Babylon and Babylon hated? The Jews are hated by the Catholics. How much food do the Catholics eat and how much of their wine come from Israel? Biden said in the beginning, his, his president, well, you know, I'm a friend of the Jews. You sure ain't helping them. Are you enjoying his food? Because one day God's going to say, you're an enemy of Israel. I'm cutting your food off. You know who's going to live in Jerusalem? You know who's going to survive in Jerusalem? The Antichrist. And what's the Antichrist and all his people? They're going to eat Israeli food. And God said, well, seven years is up. No more. And then what food are we going to enjoy from Israel then? Food without the curse. You read about in in in, in uh, Deuteronomy when Moses sent those spies in. Did you read about those grapes they brought back? Where two men had had to carry those grapes. I can I can imagine those those grapes were bigger than beach balls. I'd be happy. I can imagine what my tomatoes will look like. When the curse is removed. And not one enemy of Israel is ever going to enjoy that. They're going to be in hell. The goat nations. The antichrist. The beasts are going to be in hell. Satan is going to be locked up for a thousand years. Anybody who opposes God. Anybody who opposes Jesus. Anybody who opposes a Jew. Anybody who opposes the Christian. There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a flame of fire by the Dead Sea. Jesus ain't going to jump in the lake. And the sons of the strangers shall not drink thy wine. Strangers. There's going to be no strangers in the land of Israel in the millennium. And that can't be Gentiles because there will be Gentiles in the millennium. We've already read. But then Gentiles are not going to be strangers. They're going to be known by the Jews. You imagine those Jews that come out of the tribulation period and you imagine the thanks they're going to be giving to the Jews to help to the Gentiles to help them. You realize it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have had enough food to survive. It wasn't for the fact is that you hid us from the Antichrist. Man, they're going to be great celebrations. And the enemies. So there's wine in the millennium. Not intoxicated fermented wine because that went out with the curse. Fermentation went out with the curse because that's the curse. You're going to have wine and you're going to have aged wine and it ain't going to ferment. For the, for the which thou hast labored. They're going to labor. They're going to work in the millennium before Genesis 3. What did God tell Adam? I'm going to put you in the garden to dress the garden, to work the garden. Work became before the fall. Work is not a curse. But they that have gathered it shall eat it. <laughs> Plain and simple. And praise the Lord. They are not doing that now, and they're, they're not enjoying the fruits of their labor to the fullest. 
There'll be no capitalist system in the in the millennium. Now I hear the you know the capitalist system. You know the guy went out and hired everybody for their painting at the end of the day, and they hired you know the capitalist system. Well, that's not in the millennium. When you got Jesus Christ, King, not President. And then a lot of American Christians today, they don't like, they, they, they're, they're not going to love heaven. Because in heaven there will be no guns, no Republicans, no grand old party, no White House, no stars and stripes, no hound dogs, no hunting. They're not going to love heaven. Because there's no Americanism in heaven. It's all about Jesus. They want their freedom so they can do whatever they want outside. Of the Praise the Lord. They that have brought it together shall drink it in the courts of my holiness. What's the courts of my holiness? There's the temple and the holiness is there's Jesus Christ. And then they're going to bring in all the fruits and all the vegetables. And just like under the law, it's going to be given to God. It's going to be given to the priest. And some of the, the meals the priests were allowed to eat in the holy place. <coughs> but who reads, who reads the Old Testament? Who studies the Old Testament? They realize it's all coming back. Go through, go through the gates. Ezekiel says they're gates. Lord, when will we ever get to Ezekiel? Prepare ye the way of the people. And Jesus said, I'm the way. Cast up the highway. The, the king's highway is what it's called. That's the route that Jesus is going to come. That's the route that Joshua went. But who reads the Old Testament? Gather out the stones. Lift up the standard for the... There's a flag. And it's not going to be the stars and stripes. And they're not going to pledge allegiance to the standard. I don't pledge allegiance to a flag. I don't pledge allegiance to a piece of cloth. That's honoring that as a god. Well, I'm going to pledge allegiance to a piece of cloth. One nation under God. That cloth has become your God. And people are going to hate me for that. I don't care. Because I'll tell you what. You're not going to see the stars and stripes flying above New Jerusalem. And for that very statement I just made, many American Christians will not want to go to New Jerusalem. How come, uh, for, for, I think it's a v, VH, uh, the Veterans for what, VFW, whatever the place is. you got to call them up to get rid of an old flag because you can't just throw an old flag in the garbage. You can't let the flag touch the ground. You can't do this to the flag. You can't burn the flag. And yet the Bible can be thrown in the garbage. The Bible can be thrown in the, uh, on the ground. And the Bible can be burned. But you can't do it to the flag. Something wrong with that picture. And you're you're going to tell me, oh, we don't, we don't. We don't adore and honor the flag. Yes, you do. When you treat that flag more better than you treat your Bible. People hang the flag. They hang the flag. But poorly do they read their Bible. There'll be, stand, there'll be flags, but it, it says here, standard for the people, but it's not giving honor and praise to it. Behold the Lord. Has proclaimed unto the end of the earth, all around the earth. Say ye unto the daughter of Zion, Jerusalem, Jewish. Now watch that. Behold, thy salvation, Jewish salvation, Revelation 22, 12. Cometh. What is the salvation that is coming for Israel? Revelation 19, the Lord Jesus Christ. What is his name? Salvation. What's his name? What's Jesus' name to me today? Salvation. Calvary's cross. 
and he'll be salvation to the Jew, and we believe still a preacher. But that place prepared for uh, Revelation 12, a place prepared for Israel, wherever that place is. When Jesus Christ mounts up on the horse, second advent, Revelation 19, that is salvation to the Jews. And we're going to bring them into their promised land like another man did. And his name was Joshua. Do you know what Joshua means? Joshua means Jehovah saved. Do you know what Jesus means? Jehovah saved. There's the salvation. Tell the Jehovah Witnesses, take a swan dive and a belly flop into the lake of fire with their doctrine. I have. Because Jesus is God and Jesus will be salvation to the Jews. Don't you ever say God is finished with the Jews. He's not. There's the salvation. I read something today and it's quite remarkable. That the writer of the book I was saying that the 144,000 he went so far to say that the 144,000 at the end, when Jesus, that's how many there are left, the 144,000, the elite, that's it. Those are going to be the ones that the, the Antichrist doesn't, and I don't know, but I, that would be a very, listen, the Antichrist is going to kill these Jews. God has to prepare a play for it. Jesus said, separate the times be changed. I'm not quoting quote, the set for the elect's sake. Well, the elect is 144,000, and they're not Jehovah's Witnesses. But whoever is there that is Jewish, their salvation is the Lord Jesus Christ. And guess who's behind them? The church. And we're going to pick up them like they did with Rahab. We're going to bring them to the promised land. We're going to go over that cursed city of Jericho. And they're going to go into the land. Now, Joshua and Israel did not read, weed up the inhabitants of the land. God said, get in there, wipe them all out. They didn't do it. And they fell into sin. And they fell into their gods. And they fell into the false worship. And they were offering their children to to uh, uh, uh the, uh, the uh, Molech. And they worship the queen of heaven. This time when Jesus comes up, man, he roots up all the goats. And casts all the goats into hell. Say, okay, guys, here it is. Pure. No enemies. What we just read. Anybody, who, whoever they are, whoever is an enemy of Israel will not be in the millennium. They will be weeded out by Jesus when God plants his people in the land. There'll be no false altars. There'll be no Catholic churches. There'll be no queen of heavens. There'll be no false altars. There'll be no high places. There'll be no religion. There'll be Jesus Christ, the apostles, the Israelites, and the church. And Gentiles. For a thousand years. And the only thing that retains the curse is the serpent. And if you want yourself a nice, fluffy, fluffy bed that is so comfortable, you recall yourself back to Daniel when he's laying in the lion's den. Oh, I had a good night's sleep, King. Because the Bible says the lion shall lay with, with the sheep. You know who the sheep are? Israel. Behold thy salvation, Israel cometh. Behold his reward is with him. What is his reward? Yeah, I know it's the land, but let's look at it for a moment. What is the reward of the salvation? Let me ask you a question. Those Christians that do right and, and, and try to do their best ability, what happens to them? Don't they get gold, silver, precious stones, and a right to an inheritance? So what is the other reward of Jesus besides the land going to the Jew? How about the Christians wearing crowns and ready to get a city? 
And there, that would be Joel chapter 2, when the Christians who have done proper th during their life as a Christian, riding behind Jesus Christ, and maybe we already been given our orders. I don't, again, I don't know what happens to the carnal Christian who don't get no rewards and don't get, listen, that inheritance is a reward. It is an inheritance by doing. His reward is with him. Who's with Jesus? The church. And his work before him. What is his work? I'm going to put Israel in the land. I'm going to get rid of the goat nation. I'm going to get the sheep nation, and I'm going to bring them in there. I'm going to bring them to the temple. I'm going to remove the curse. It's going to be a thousand-year millennium. That's the work. What's the reward? The Christians. We're with him. They shall call them the holy people. They're not called that today. Now, they were called that in the law. Before Moses died, he said, you're the holy people. Are you really going to call them the holy people, at least from the book of Judges? <coughs> I apologize. Where the book of Judges, the Holy Spirit said, every man did that which right in their own eyes. <laughs> That's not holy people. Throughout the Old Testament, they are burning their children to Molech. That's not holy people. They are killing Christians. They did. In the book of Acts, and they, they killed the apostles. That's not holy people. Don't you want to go to the holy land? No, I'll go to, to the land of Israel where the holy people will be, and that will be under Jesus Christ. Then I'll be in the holy land. And there'll be no Catholics, and no Arabians, and no Ishmaelites, and there'll be no cursed people. It'll be 100% great and wonderful. I'll take the trip to the holy people, to the holy land, through the holy Jesus Christ. Thank you very much. Now, there are other things I want on this earth, while I'm living on this earth. May God answer the prayer for that. One of them is not the holy land. Now, you want to be nice and get me the holy land? Just give me the money, and I'll pay some of my bills off. That would be more important than the Holy Land experience. I don't want a bunch of Catholics and a bunch of Arabians telling me what the Bible says, and they have nothing to do with but the Bible. And if you're going over to Holy Land and you let a Catholic priest or Arabian tell you about the Bible, I've heard the people tell me who've gone over there and had the priest and had the Arabians say, this is where Jesus, this is what Jesus, this is. they don't know the Bible. And they're lacking the Holy Spirit. How are they going to tell you? I'm just opening up my Bible and let God speak to me. I don't need Tennessee art. I don't need the Holy Land experience in Florida. I've got the Holy King James 1611 Bible and waiting for Jesus Christ. The very fact is that the, the, the ark is on Mount Ararat and God said, keep it closed. That means he doesn't want us to see the ark. Okay? Holy people, that's Israel, Israel, Israel. The redeem of the Lord, and how are they redeemed? Through the capital R, Redeemer, the Lord Jesus Christ, the salvation. And thou shalt be called, Israel, sought out. A city not forsaken, that is not today. You know the city of, of Jerusalem is forsaken by God because you got the dumb, D-U-M, of the rock there right now. And the next great figure in future that's going to be in Jerusalem is going to be the Antichrist. The Antichrist will show up in Jerusalem long before Jesus comes. I don't think you're going to call that the holy city. Now, if you as a Christian, you want to defile the Bible, and you want to reject the Bible, go ahead, call it this holy city. It ain't. And if you do, you need to repent of your sins. That's why people hate me. That's why people can't sin, because I get up and kick. 
I preach the truth no matter what the truth is. And wait till we get to Jeremiah. Ooh, I love Jeremiah. You don't like me kicking. You don't like what I say and the things I do. Avoid 52 chapters of Jeremiah and come back when we do Lamentations. Because Jeremiah is a great book. 